now that we've logged some data with our logger, we're going to connect again. Again, Bluetooth Low Energy does not support streaming data live, so you can't leave your connection open indefinitely. If we had left our connection open, we would get a message that says we're going to close the connection and give you a countdown. It'll ask you if you want to stay connected. So it's really not designed to be connected full time or even over long periods of time. Just just enough time to configure the logger, launch it, offload data, um, and get status, things like that. But it's not really designed to be uh, uh, connected all the time over the air. So let's, con let's connect to this again, and we're going to read out our data. Again, there's not much in there. We haven't been logging very long, but uh, we can look at some historical data as well. So here is where we would select readout tap on readout and again read out the data and again it says we're successful so we click on OK and we can see down at the bottom of the screen we have a little red one in next to data files which means we have a new data file available so if we click on data files it'll ask us to close the connection again we, we this isn't Bluetooth low energy is not meant to be connected full time or even for long periods of time so we're gonna have to say yes Okay, and there's all of our data files. Uh, the one, the top one is the latest. I'm going to click on the one below that. A little more interesting. So there's my mini graph. If I turn my iPad, we can see it a little easier, I think. There we go. So there's my graph. If I click on the three lines up here in the right hand corner, and we can see here's my sensors. They were turned on, and this is what's plotted. This is where I can select if I want to see dew point. Dew point's calculated by the app. So we can click on that. And again, these are my internal events, just like Hobo Wear with their UX products. It keeps track of. Um, internal events like when we calibrated the device when mal manual calibration happened so we can click on to show those because I did do a manual calibration during this uh, deployment we can also select to show when the calibration button was pushed when if the USB host was connected and when the end of file marker was written now you can see you can see the the CO2 value axis over there on the left so what I'm going to do is stick my finger on there and just slide it over or just click on it, actually tap on it and there's my updated graph that includes dew point what you see here that little statistical icon is when the um, when our calibration was done click on the I we'll get some information about the configuration and the, the device identification so the again the model number serial number firmware version if we click on the little right arrow under logger configuration it takes us to the uh, how the device was configured in our configuration window so if we wanted to review that click on done back to our mini graph and then here is your typical uh, this is the share configuration you can so this is how you share your data and what you select what format so Excel spreadsheet comma separated values uh, a plain .txt file or in our hoboware format so you can open it in our hoboware software or you can just get an image of the graph save it as a as an image file and we're going to share this file in hoboware format uh, via email and we'll show you what that looks like in hoboware so we use the hobo mobile app to share this data file in hoboware format we emailed it to our email account and then using our email client we um, unattach that email attachment that data file and now we're going to open it in Hoboware this is the free version of Hoboware it will work in Hoboware 
the free version or the pro version. So this is our plot setup screen. Should look familiar to us these days. There's our description we put in when we launched the logger with the uh, the mobile app. We can select the display dew point, our temp our HCO2 data. Here are our internal events. We're going to select manual calibration. I did do a manual calibration during this deployment, so I'll check that off so we can see how that's uh, noted in the data file. And again, we have the ability to put in an offset from GMT or what is called UCT time, uh, just like any other uh, logger from onset. The uh, logger gets its date and time from the device that's it's being launched from, be it a uh, computer, uh, a smartphone running the Hobo Mobile app, or, or a tablet, or a shuttle device. So all we're doing when we're selecting an offset from GMT is we're selecting to offset the time reference for the plot for, for display on the screen. It doesn't affect the original data file. Click plot. There is our data. Again, it's a fairly short deployment. So our tabular data here, our five minute data. You can see here's our XY plot. Temperature, our CO2 concentrations, and our relative humidity in percent. You notice over here under manual, the manual calibration series, we have a manual calibration value that was recorded. That's what it's using to determine its offset to do its uh, to do its calibration. Uh, again, we did that using the, again using the crosshairs tool. If we click right on that this is the internal event right here it takes us right to that point it was 10 6 a.m. this morning is when we did that and again this is a, a the manual calibration automatic calibration happens 24 hours after launch if a manual calibration doesn't happen before then and then every eight days after that 